Hello and welcome to my channel in the last video we were having some audio difficulties but hopefully this is better we have I've consulted my audio engineer no I don't have one my audio engineer Jordan Jordan yes Jordan how'd you do it I just did it no <laughs> uh, I don't have an audio audio engineer I, I fixed it myself but we are reading this, our, my channel is food for HNM it's like it is like food for thought thank you for joining me I am Jimmy Chen James Chen a Jimmy Chen and we are reading Joshua 22 we are almost through finished with the book of Joshua which is in the Old Testament of the Holy Bible Holy Bible the Holy Bible has many good stories and it is actually a long story from beginning to end the Old Testament is from a long time ago and the New Testament see is divided into two testaments the New Testament is from also quite long but not as long ago from from 2000 years ago 2000 years ago Jesus Christ the Lord he 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 was God in the flesh he was the God man he came and walked the earth is that amazing you know what if Galactus came today you know or sent uh, what are those guys called celestials from the Marvel movies and we looked up and we saw them and then they landed on the earth and they came to visit us we would go wow it is the same thing but even better 2,000 years ago because God is more powerful than Galactus or the Celestials more powerful than this being called eternity or even par more powerful than the one from whom all comes there is someone that is called something like the the one you Marvel Marvel heads, leave a comment below. So there are two testaments. The New Testament, which talks about God coming, you know, the creator of everything, came to this earth two thousand years ago in the form of a man. He looked bigger than me, probably more handsome, definitely more articulate. He was Jesus Christ. The Lord and um, all in all the Bible has 69 books that should be easy to remember no 66 66 I, I stand corrected 39 books in the Old Testament or OT and 27 books in the New Testament so we are reading the Old Testament and this is in it this is the book of Joshua we're almost done Joshua 22 22 uh, the, the next section is titled Eastern tribes return home then Joshua Yehoshua summoned the Reubenites the Gadites and the half tribe of Manasseh, Manasseh, and said to them, You have done all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded, and you have obeyed me in everything I commanded. So, Yehoshua, Joshua is talking to these three tribes, saying, Great job. For a long time now, to this very day, you have not deserted your fellow Israelites but have carried out the mission the Lord your God gave you now that the Lord your God has given them rest as he promised return to your homes in the land that Moses the servant of the Lord gave you on the other side of the Jordan 
But be very careful to keep the commandment and the law that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you to love the Lord your God. So remember, we read Deuteronomy. In Deuteronomy, this is the main command that you have to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, a mind and soul. To love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to Him, to keep His commands, to hold fast to Him, and to serve Him with all your heart and with all your soul. Then Joshua, Yehoshua, blessed them and sent them away, and they went to their homes, to the half-tribe of Manasseh, Manasseh. Moses had given land in Bashan, and to the other half of the tribe, Joshua, Yehoshua, gave land on the west side of the Jordan, along with their fellow Israelites, when Joshua Yehoshua sent them home. He blessed them, saying, Return to your homes with your great wealth, with large herds of livestock, with silver, gold, bronze, and iron, and a great quantity of clothing, and divide the plunder from your enemies with your fellow Israelites. So the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half tribe of Manasseh, Manasseh, left, left the Israelites at Shiloh in Canaan to return to Gilead, their own land. So remember, Gilead is the land of the Reubenites, Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. I think there's the tribe of Manasseh. So there, there might be the tribe of Manasseh or Manasseh and the half-tribe of Manasseh or Manasseh. That is their land, Gilead. Uh, let me just um, try to give you some more details, deets, they used to be called. These three wanted land before they went into the land promised. So it seems a little strange, like they, they want something before, it, before it's time. But they promised to fight almost twice as hard. You know? And here Joshua, Yehoshua is saying that, you know, you did it. You did a great job. And now they get to return to their home, which is a little more to the east, which they had acquired in accordance with the, the command of the Lord through Moses when they came to Geliloth, near the Jordan, in the land of Canaan. The Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, Manasseh, built an imposing altar there by the Jordan. And when the Israelites heard that they had built the altar on the border of Canaan at Geliloth, near the Jordan, on the Israelite side, the whole assembly of Israel gathered at Shiloh to go to war against them. So the Israelites sent Phinehas, Phineas or Phinehas, son of Eleazar or Eleazar the priest, to the land of Gilead, to Reuben, Gad, and the half tribe of Manasseh or Manasseh. With him they sent ten of the chief men, one from each of the tribes of Israel, each the head of a family division, among the Israelite clans. When they went to Gilead, to Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, Manasseh, they said to them, The whole assembly of the Lord says, How could you break faith with the God of Israel like this? How could you turn away from the Lord and build yourselves an altar 
in rebellion against him now? Was not the sin of Peor enough for us? Up to this very day, we have not cleansed ourselves from that sin, even though a plague fell on the community of the Lord. And are you now turning away from the Lord? If you rebel against the Lord today, tomorrow he will be angry with the whole community of Israel. If the land you possess is defiled, come over to the Lord's land where the Lord's tabernacle stands, and share the land with us. But do not rebel against the Lord or against us by building an altar for yourselves, other than the altar of the Lord our God. When Achan, or Achan, son of Zerah, was unfaithful in regard to the, the devoted things. So uh, Achan, uh, in an earlier video, God after God led the Israelites to attack this one city, Jericho, he wanted the city and all the people killed and the city just burned and like totally broken down. And all the silver gold, all these precious items that were made of metal, he wanted it put in his treasury. But Achan and Achan stole he wanted a beautiful robe from Babylon. And then, I think he just, he wanted like an item of silver and a gold bar. I'm not too accurate right now. He, so he brought wrath upon all of Israel. So when Achan was unfaithful, did not wrath come on the whole community of Israel? He was not the only one who died for his sin. Then Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, Manasseh, replied to the heads of the clans of Israel, The Mighty One, God, the Lord. The Mighty One, God, the Lord. He knows and let Israel know. If this had been in rebellion or disobedience to the Lord, do not spare us this day. If we have built our own altar to turn away from the Lord, and to offer burnt offerings and grain offerings, or to sacrifice fellowship offerings on it, may the Lord himself call us to account. No, we did it for fear that some day your descendants might say to ours, What do you have to do with the Lord, the God of Israel? The Lord has made the Jordan a boundary between us and you, the you Reubenites and Gadites. You have no share in in the Lord, so your descendants might cause ours to stop fearing the Lord. That is why we said, let us get ready and build an altar, but not for burnt offerings or sacrifices. On the contrary, it is to be a witness between us and you and the generations that follow, that we will worship the Lord at his sanctuary with our burnt offerings sacrifices and fellowship offerings then in the future your descendants will not be able to say to ours you have no share in the lord and we said if they ever say this to us or to our descendants we will answer look at the replica of the lord's altar which our ancestors built not for burnt offerings and sacrifices, but as a wit witness between us and you. Far be it from us to rebel against, against the Lord and turn away from him today by building an altar for burnt offerings, grain offerings, and sacrifices other than the altar of the Lord our God that stands before his tabernacle. When Phinehas, Phinehas the priest, and the leaders of the community, the heads of the clans of the Israelites, heard what Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh, Manasseh had to say, they were pleased, they're happy. And so they won't fight them. No, they're not going to go to war uh, against their, you know, like their brothers. And 
Phinehas, Phineas, son of Eleazar, Eleazar, the priest, said to Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh, or Manasseh, Today we know that the Lord is with us, because you have not been unfaithful to the Lord in this matter. In this matter. Now you have rescued the Israelites from the Lord's hand. Then Phinehas, or Phineas, son of Eleazar, or Eleazar, the priest, and the leaders returned to Canaan from their meeting, meeting with the Reubenites and Gadites in Gilead, and reported to the Israelites. They were glad to hear the report and praised God, and they talked no more about going to war against them to devastate the country where the Reubenites and the Gadites lived. And the Reubenites and the Gadites gave the altar this name, a witness between us that the Lord is God. Now let's move on forward to Joshua 23. That was a long chapter. Uh, pardon me. Joshua 23 it is titled Joshua's Farewell to the Leaders. After a long time had passed, and the Lord had given Israel rest from all their enemies around them, around them, Joshua, Yehoshua. By then a very old man summoned all Israel, their elders, leaders, judges, and officials, and said to them, I am very old. You yourselves have seen everything the Lord your God has done to all these nations for your sake. It was the Lord your God who fought for you. Remember how I have allotted as an inheritance for your tribes, all the land of the nations that remain, the nations I conquered between the Jordan and the Mediterranean Sea in the west, the Lord your God himself will push them out for your sake. He will drive them out before you, and you will take possession of their land as the Lord your God promised you. Be very strong, be careful to obey all that is written in the book of the law of Moses without turning aside to the right or to the left. Do not associate with these nations that remain among you. Do not invoke the names of their gods or swear by them. You must not serve them or bow down to them, but you are to hold fast to the Lord your God as you have until now. The Lord has driven out before you great and powerful nations. To this day, no one has been able to withstand you. One of you routs a thousand, because the Lord your God fights for you, just as he promised. So be very careful to love the Lord your God. But if you turn away, and ally yourselves with the survivors of these nations that remain among you. And if you intermarry with them and associate with them, then you may be sure that the Lord your God will no longer drive out these nations before you. Instead, they will become snares and traps for you, whips on your backs and thorns in your eyes until you perish from this good land which the Lord your God has given you. Now I am about to go the way of all the earth. You know with all your heart and soul that not one of all the, the good promises the Lord your God gave you has failed. So the Lord, you know, God, the, the Creator, the Lord our God, He fulfilled every promise he made 
Every, pro every promise has been fulfilled. Not one has failed. But just as all the good things the Lord your God has promised, has promised you, have come to you, so he will bring on you all the evil things he has, he has threatened until the Lord your God has destroyed you from this good land he has given you. If you violate the covenant of the Lord your God, which he commanded you, and go and serve other gods and bow down to them, the Lord's anger will burn against you and you will, will quickly perish from the good land he has given you. Let's go to Joshua 24. Joshua 24, the next section is titled, The Covenant Renewed at Shechem. Then Joshua, Yehoshua, assembled all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He summoned the elders, leaders, judges, and officials of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. Joshua, you know, his name is Yehoshua, it's pronounced Yehoshua. And uh, they wrote a different language. Said to all the people, for example, my name is Jimmy Chen. You know, it's, it really is Jimmy Chen. You know, Jimmy Chen is a name for human beings. But my name is James Chen, but in Chinese it's Chen Bo Wen. So, <laughs> uh, well, Chinese is different, you know. When we mention his name is Joshua, you know, a long time ago they they spoke in different languages, so. They spoke something like Aramaic, maybe, or Syriac, maybe Syriac. So his, when they called Joshua back then, Yehoshua. You know, but we speak English, so we have to change it to Joshua, you know. But because, you know, Chinese is different, you know. It's in characters. And, you know, Chen is uh, Chen, so Bowen is not quite James, you know. Uh, my name could be Bowen Chen. But, oh well, I don't pick my name. You know, I didn't pick my name at birth. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. Long ago, your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham, and Nahor, lived beyond the, the Euphrates River and worshipped other gods. But I took your father, Abraham, from the land beyond the Euphrates and led him throughout Canaan and gave him many descendants. I gave him Isaac, and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I signed the hill country of Seir or Se Seir or Seir to Esau, but Jacob and his family went down to Egypt. Then, so Joshua is telling a story um, of what the Lord your God, the Lord our God, how He guided the everything that has led up to this point in the story. See, now they have a country. This is how it happened. You know. Then I sent Moses and Aaron, and I afflicted the Egyptians by what I did there, and I brought you out. When I brought your people out of Egypt, you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued them with chariots and horsemen as far as the Red Sea. But they cried out to the Lord for help, and he put darkness between you and the Egyptians. He brought the sea over them and covered them. So that is what you call a understatement. What happened was God, when, when their ancestors, these Israelites guys, you know, I mean that in a good way, when they left Egypt, there were many of them. 
It wasn't easy to get the ruler of Egypt to let them go. But then after he let them go, he changed his mind and he started to chase them with the military. And they had chariots and horsemen. So what God did, he was angry. He said, you know, you know Moses and God and Aaron were probably like, well, he said he will let us go. And here he is changing his mind again. Again, you know. So what God did was when they came, they were coming up to this Red Sea. God actually made the sea rise up and split like this. So there was dry land in the middle. And then he, the, God, the Lord, commanded Moses to tell the people to walk through, walk through, you know, all of that water, standing straight up, because there's dry ground in the middle again. So it says right here, he brought the sea over them and covered them. So pretend the sea is like this, right? And there's dry ground in the middle. So there's like a wall of water here and a wall of water back here. So the Israelites, these their ancestors, walked through. And, you know, there's a limit to how large the sea is. So it must have been a long, you know, they were like running from these guys. This military that was chasing after them. Must have, must have been a long run or march, you know. Must have taken more than, more than one hour. So they ran to the other side, and then when they were safe on the other side, because like a lake, there's, you know, there's a shore, right? So there's a shore over here, a shore over here. So they, when they made it to this side, these guys that were chasing them with chariots and horsemen, they were kind of in the middle of all of that water. So God, you know, the Lord, the creator of everything, he is called the Lord, our God, or the Lord. He just then made all that water smash, boom, you know crash onto that military and drown them you know they're all dead you saw with your own eyes what i that is god the lord your god did to the egyptians killed them then you lived in the wilderness for a long time i brought you to the land of the amorites who lived east of the Jordan. They fought against you, but I gave them into your hands. I destroyed them from before you. So remember, this is not what Joshua did for, Yehoshua did for everyone. He is being, um, he's just telling everyone, he's being a storyteller. He's saying, because a lot of time, a lot of time has passed since what he is talking about happened. So this is what God did for the people you know, a long time ago. They fought against you, but I gave them into your hands. I destroyed them from before you, and you took possession of their land, the Amorites. When Balak, son of Zippor, the king of Moab, prepared to fight against Israel, he sent for Balaam, or ba Balaam, son of Beor, to put a curse on you. But I, I would not listen to Balaam or Balaam. So he blessed you again and again. So God controlled him to bless Israel. And I delivered you out of, out of his hand. Then you crossed the Jordan and came to Jericho. The citizens of Jericho fought against you, as did also the Amorites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hittites, Girgashites, Hivites, and Jebusites. Okay, for those of you out there listening, what is the Jebusite city? Jerusalem? If you thought Jerusalem, you're correct. All right. But I gave them into your hands. I sent the hornet ahead of you, which drove them out before you. Also, the two Amorite kings, you did not do it with your own your own sword and bow so i gave you a land on which you did not toil and cities you did not build and you live in them and eat from vineyard vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant now fear the lord and serve him with all faithfulness throw away the gods of your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord 
But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. And Joshua is saying, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. That's a good Bible verse. Joshua 24. 15. It's near the end of it. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord, to serve other gods. It was the Lord our God himself who brought us and our parents up out of Egypt from that land of slavery and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey and among all the nations through which we traveled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites who lived in, in the land. We too will serve the Lord because he is our God. Joshua, Yehoshua said to the people, you are not able to serve the Lord. He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your rebellion and your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign, foreign gods, he will turn and bring disaster on you and make an end of you after he has been good to you. But the people said to Joshua, Yehoshua, no, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua, Yehoshua said, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, we are witnesses. They replied. Now then, said Joshua, Yehoshua, Throw away the foreign gods that are among you and yield your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, Yehoshua, we will serve the Lord, our God, and obey him. On that day, Joshua, Yehoshua, made a covenant. I didn't know he made a covenant. It's right there. In Joshua 24, 25. He made a covenant for the people. And there at Shechem, he reaffirmed for them decrees and laws so it, it is a covenant but it is more remember this is a renewal renewal of the covenant so there at Shechem he reaffirmed for them decrees and laws and Joshua Yehoshua recorded these things in the book of the law of God then he took a large stone and set it up there under the oak near the holy place of the Lord. See, he said to all the people, this stone will be a witness against us. It has heard all the words the Lord has said to us. It will be a, wit be a witness against you if you are untrue to your God. Then Joshua Yehoshua dismissed the people each to their own inheritance. The next section is titled Buried, Buried in the Promised Land. After these things, Joshua Yehoshua, son of Nun, the servant of the Lord. Remember, a servant of the Lord is someone who says, Yes, Lord, yes, to the commands of the Lord who is God, the Creator. Remember, like Darth Vader, he tells the Emperor, Yes, my Lord, it shall be done. Died at the He died, Joshua, Yehoshua died at the age of a hundred and ten, and they buried him in the land of his inheritance at Timnath Sarah, 
in the hill country of Ephraim or Ephraim, north of Mount Gaash. Israel served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua, Yehoshua, and of the elders who outlived him and who had experienced everything the Lord had done for Israel and Joseph's bones which the Israelites had brought up from Egypt were buried at Shechem in the tract of land that Jacob bought for a hundred pieces of silver from the sons of ha ha Amor, the father of Shechem. This became the inheritance of Joseph's descendants. And Eleazar, Eleazar, son of Aaron, died and was buried at Gibeah, which had been allotted to his son Phinehas, or Phineas, in the hill country of Ephraim, or Ephraim. That's it. That is the book of Joshua. All right, everyone. If you have made it through the entire book of Joshua, give yourself a pat on the back. All right. Remember, keep God first, and he'll take your places. Thank you for listening, and I hope that you will continue to watch my videos.